You're gonna love this. That's more like it, little buddy. As the undisputed king of the aquarium, the goldfish has exploded in the wild as one of the most invasive fish species in North America. But could they also serve as the next unknown delicacy that you could pull out of your local pond? I'm Spencer Newarth, and this is Pardon My Plate, a show where we debunk and explore the human palate by eating what most consider to be repulsive, offensive, or altogether inedible. Let's see if we can dig the golden flavor out of this small carp because it might just be the next big fish. The premise of today, we're gonna play a game. Do you know two truths and a lie? Have you ever played this game? I have. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> easy, all right, well, easy for me, okay? This is the part of my play Goldfish edition of Two Truths and a Lie. Okay. How much do you know about goldfish, Carl? Have you ever had one as a pet? Yeah, I had five. Have you ever had a pet goldfish? No, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, I had one when I was a kid. His name was Larry Bird. I won him at the fair. I actually remember the biggest one got stuck in his little uh, bridge thing. He got too big. I also had a cat at the same time, so it, they, they were not fast friends, we'll say. <laughs> so. so I'm gonna give you three facts. One of them is a lie. You can tell me which one okay. is a lie. Let's mm -hmm. ask you some questions about goldfish right. reproduction. Okay. Goldfish sex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goldfish are sexually mature at three years old. Goldfish can spawn once a month when living in the wild. Goldfish eggs only need to incubate for five to seven days. I'm gonna say the, the sexually mature one is a lie. You're right again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, you would be correct. I think they can do 40,000 eggs. One female can have 40,000 eggs. Jesus. Did you do his research? He did. Chester may be the main reigning champ here. I'd rather catch a walleye. <laughs> Carl owned goldfish, so he must know a lot about goldfish. So let's test his wit here. Goldfish are thought to be the first foreign fish introduced to the United States in the 1800s. Goldfish are just smaller koi. Goldfish can be found living in the wild in Lake Tahoe. I'm gonna say that the first one is false. First foreign fish introduced to the United States. You were wrong. Damn! Uh, ah! At this point, I'm just guessing random ones because I don't know any of these <laughs> things about goldfish. Um, so let's go with the middle one. You're right. Yes! <sighs> this guy, this nice guy. job, man. Got it. <laughs> so goldfish and koi are actually two distinct species. Okay. They cool. can um, reproduce together, but like a mule, mm -hmm. their offspring is infertile. So here's the deal with goldfish. Nobody eats them. It's probably because everyone just thinks of them as a pet. They're that familiar face you see at the dentist's office or win at the fair. For some, it'd be like eating a parakeet or a hamster, and that's understandable. You see, goldfish are found in nearly every state and continent, even though they're only native to Asia. That gives them basically the same distribution as the beloved largemouth bass. This shouldn't come as a surprise since Caricius erratus, or goldfish, is considered to be North America's first introduced fish. It's believed they made their initial appearance here over 300 years ago with additional introductions along the way. So how do we arrive at this moment in history where they're one of the most widespread fishes in the country? Well, for the most part, you can thank the government. In the mid-1800s, the United States Fish Commission was raising them in hatcheries and sending them to anyone who wanted one for their pond, fountain, or aquarium. In a 20-year span, they shipped goldfish to 37 different states. Then, as part of a publicity stunt in the late 1800s, residents of Baltimore and Washington, D.C. could get a goldfish if they simply wrote a letter to their local congressman. In the program's 10-year history, they gave out 200,000 goldfish. By the early 1900s, you weren't cool if you didn't have goldfish. At least that's how certain states acted. 
The best example of this is Wisconsin, who hadn't yet seen the species in their waters. So, in 1907, they sent 100,000 lake trout eggs to Nebraska in exchange for a couple thousand goldfish. That's one of the funniest and most lopsided trades I've ever heard of. So what's the big deal with having goldfish in every neighborhood pond and urban waterway? Well, they're really good at outcompeting, replacing, and reducing populations of native fishes. They're also responsible for causing massive algae blooms, even though they're often stocked for the purpose of getting rid of algae. Some commercial anglers are taking advantage of this, like those that fish the Great Lakes. In 2015 alone, there were over 100,000 pounds of goldfish netted from Lake Erie. Most of them were shipped to niche markets in Los Angeles and New York, where they sell for the same price as ground beef. Now I'd like to eat one of these for myself, but I ain't traveling to California to buy one. Instead, I'm going to catch a few from a local pond in Bozeman and cook them up with my buddy Seth Morris, a man with a refined palate for freshwater fish. Is it going to be a delicious surprise like carp in season one, or is it going to be a muddy bony mess that makes for terrible table fare? Seth, I want you on this side of the cutting board now for these goldfish. We need a fishy guy. Seth Morris is like the fishiest guy I know. And oh, thank you. Every episode of Pardon My Plate, he's been on the other side of the camera. So now we're going to bring him on this side of the camera. I'm glad you decided to bring me in for this one. Yeah, this is a special one. What is like the worst fish you've ever eaten? Uh, I think the worst fish is probably the carp that you... <laughs> Made in season one. Uh -huh. Part of my plate. And and what do you think is the best fish? Like, what's your favorite fish to eat? My go-to is walleye. Yeah. But two fish that I don't eat all the time um, that I really like is pompano and bling cod. Mm. Not speaking my language with those, but walleye, I'm with you. I, like my brain can't make my hands do the next move. Order the sinko bird. Get And everything we like about walleye is the opposite with one of these things, right? Like a walleye has white flesh, firm flesh, largely boneless, a very mild flavor. Everything you want in the fish. Yeah. This is everything you don't want in the fish. Exactly, this is gonna be like a dark, red, muddy meat, soft, full of bones. And right off the bat, it stinks. Yeah, this thing is gonna taste like a minnow bucket. Yeah. But you never know, there might be some good in it, we'll see. Yeah, so how do you think we should cook one of these things though? We should do what you do with most fish is just and just fry it. Yeah. Throw in a deep fryer. Flay them. Take the skin off. This is one of the most invasive fish in the world and in the country. And if we want other Americans to eat those things, we're gonna figure out like how to fry them, I think. That's the only way. Yeah. I think we should just try to fillet one first. This one's gonna be a little tough. That thing, when Spencer caught this thing, it was full of eggs. That just loaded with eggs. I gotta show you a picture because it looked like a mutant. Look at that thing. That was like a mutant and uh, just loaded with eggs. And that's one of the problems with goldfish and how they can take over a pond. Most fish that we're familiar with will spawn like once a year, maybe twice a year. Mm -hmm. These can spawn every three weeks. These things are like the feral hog of a backyard pond. Yeah. but. I I would rather eat a feral hog, I think. I think a feral hog might be like the goldfish of the mammals. Yeah. Let's see your handiwork with the fillet knife and right. uh, one of these things. I'm gonna start with this guy. Taking the big one? Usually when I fillet walleye, yep. I go in behind the gill plate and then down. But with these, I'm just gonna do like the down the back and kind of peel it over. Yeah like every eighth of an inch, we're gonna have to make a cut in them just so we can let that hot grease try to cook out those Y bones. And if that doesn't work, uh, this is gonna be a major failure. Every bite is gonna be just like loaded with little tiny bones that are gonna be uncomfortable to eat. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot of bones in there, Spencer. <laughs> Pretty mushy too. Yeah, but right away, one, one thing I'm kind of impressed with is the flesh is like a little more yellow it looks like than, than I expected it to be dark red. That's true, there's some dark red in there, but mostly yellow fleshed. Yeah. Now these goldfish came out of a local pond, um, which is common for goldfish to be found. 
and they had every variety in there. So I think these things are like 50th generation goldfish in the wild. They didn't work, they weren't just released there once and then it just been reproducing. I think they were released over and over and over and that's how we get this variety. These things are not easy to play. <laughs> All right, well there's one. There's one. I feel like there should have been a lot more meat that came off of that. And then cut that off and put it on an earring. <laughs> that would be flashy. Well, Seth does some knife work. Let me get started on the scaler. I think this is gonna take a minute. Scales ain't too bad. These things seem like they were made to be scaled. Oh yeah, they're coming right off. I was kind of expecting, like in the carp episode, when there was like shrapnel flying everywhere. Shrapnel again. There. Steve also recognized he wasn't in his own kitchen, so he was just like having some fun with it, I think. <laughs> Camera, Chester, tell him that. That's a good one. Get a bucket of water, throw it in there so the scales don't go everywhere. So you throw it in a tub and then use that nifty scaler as it's submerged. I don't scale a lot of fish. I'll scale bluegills. Mm -hmm. Like I have a bunch of bluegills in my freezer right now that I scaled and they're ready for full fry. Now, so far, we've been crapping on these things, but here's a compliment. These scales are nice and big and easy to get off, so that's that's good. I mean, you, you did a great job. Like, you can see right through that. Not a lot of meat. No. Yeah, this, the scales are actually just, I'm pulling them off with my hands. <laughs> Now these goldfish seem like they were the king of the pond that I was catching them out of, but they grow significantly bigger than this. The American record was caught, I think two years ago in South Carolina, it was 10 pounds. Oh really? Yeah. Did you see anything remotely close to that yeah. in this pond? I felt like this guy, this was like a lunker. This would be a proud, oh, really? this would be a Montana proud angler goldfish, I think. Huh. I gotta go over there to that pond. All right, so there's, Two fillets. Off the biggest goldfish in the lake. That's like as much meat as I can get. Yeah. I just keep getting whiffs of that like rotten bin of bucket. That, that's gonna be a problem. They are pretty though. Can't take that away from them. The only time I've ever seen so many goldfish was on Jackass when Steve-O ate a goldfish alive and then threw it back up and it was still alive. And uh... He didn't fly it. Oh, okay. I think we should do one of these without scoring it. I like it. One, if, one with scores, one without. If this looks familiar, this is what Steve and I did on the first ever episode of Part of My Plate with a carp. Let's get to the scoring. You couldn't find white meat on here if you tried. It doesn't live in there. <laughs> and it was successful at getting the Y bones out. You open up these little slits and it allows that oil to penetrate the meat and just basically eviscerate those things. I'm not so certain it's gonna work on these though. It has stout rib bones for being such a little fish. Yeah. <laughs> Something that changed how I cook fish is Chef Jesse Griffiths always says you season the fish you don't have to season the flour, that's optional, but yep. you need to season the meat itself. So let's get, uh, like like we always do in part of my plate, some salt, pepper, and I think uh, probably need to like get some garlic on these too. Something. Yeah. Now I always like to do a, a confidence check, mm -hmm. like before we, we cook the thing, and then again after we cook the thing. My confidence is probably as low as it's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look terrible. No. I mean, you could show this to someone and be like, I'm gonna fry up some fish, and they'd be like, oh, great. You know, looks like a normal fish fillet, kind of. This doesn't look appetizing. No. Well, there, we, uh, we have opposite perspectives because I'm not so much worried about the flavor, I'm worried about every bite just being loaded with bones. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna hurt it. No. This is not gonna be what makes the goldfish taste bad. Too much breading. All right, that looks a little more familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only problem is, well, not that I see with it, I feel with it, is <laughs> bones. 
I think, man, the, the thing that's getting me, like I said, is the smell of it. Yeah. It just does not smell pleasant. And you forget to clean out your Yeti cooler and it's August and there were walleye that were in there. And you, you know, you don't scrub it out and it's hot. You open that thing five days later. It's similar to that. Exactly. Maybe not that bad, because that's pretty bad. All right, let's get these things in the fryer. Got to crank up. How long do you think, like three or four minutes? Probably less. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's gonna be like instant. <laughs> I, I hope, uh, especially that one that you scored. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see what the live ones say. Well, it looks good. Yeah, aesthetically, fried fish. Yeah. Um, Looks but very approachable. I know what's under that flour. Yep, we're just gonna have to taste it and see. Yeah. Like, guess what I caught these things on at this pond in Bozeman? I would think that they would eat anything, any sort of like live bait. Yeah, so if we eat this thing and it tastes like garbage, it's probably not because of like what they're eating. I'm no. just guessing goldfish in general. Yep, I agree. Like garbage. All right, let's dig in. I think we start with the scored one. Okay. And if this doesn't turn out, the other ones aren't turning out either. I'm nervous. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like a brown color. Uh huh. I see a bone sticking out there. Sure. Still tastes bad. No, we're... If, if I'm gonna like give it a shot and try fish, I'm not gonna do it with one of them. I'm not... gonna go with like a great grade A piece of sushi. Yeah. You'd rather die from a good tasting fish? Yeah. I don't Wouldn't like you? it. Yeah. Like when you go, you don't want to be like, that was not worth it. Boy, you'd feel <laughs> dumb at the doctor being like, what'd you eat? Goldfish. <laughs> you'd be like, you're an idiot. Deep fried goldfish. Oh, it just stinks. Yeah. Quite fishy. It tastes a little bit like it smells, I think. I'm, I'm trying really hard to find a Y bone, and I, I couldn't. Oh, there it is. It's one. So. All right, so it appeared that the scoring might not have worked. You know, I, I haven't encountered a bone yet, and, and the flavor isn't too bad, but then you get a bite of a piece like this, you yeah. see that flesh? Yep. That's that's like minnow bucket. Like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> you should take a bite of that. That's gonna be bad. Ooh. That's gonna be real bad. But now here I got I got some white. That just tastes like fish for the most part. It's not good. <laughs> I don't I don't think it's good. I mean I like the taste of the breading. Mm -hmm. Like you can taste the breading, you can taste the seasoning. But then you just get that. Yeah. Muddy, fishy, just kind of gross taste. Can you just grab it more? That was the worst bite yet. That was that was pure fish and pure Y bones. I might bite the lemon just to get the taste out of my mouth. <laughs> and I don't even like lemons. Yeah, that's that's not great. I mean, I think we should just keep going. Let's let's try <laughs> let's try something off here. It's like a little... Yeah, this one was a different color. It's whiter. It was smaller. It was pregnant. Maybe that makes it different. Don't don't they say something about like... Uh, what, pregnant things taste better? Pregnant sows. I thought that was like what you're looking for or something, no? I don't know. This The meat on this one's whiter. Oh, there's some of that like brown. Oh, it tastes the same. <laughs> like... It's like a foul fishy taste. You know when you taste like a good eating fish that's like just tastes fishy? Mm -hmm. This is like a fishy, shitty tasting yeah. fish. This is like if you took the worst parts of a, of a catfish, for example, and then just like loaded it with live bones. Yeah. Which is to say it's not good at all. That might be the one of the worst things we've eaten on part of my plate. 
I think. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's even really a competition either. This this is number one as far as bad things go, and I just keep finding wide bones yeah. in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> well, no one's gonna go fish that pond out for goldfish. No. Nope. Uh, I think uh, goldfish, like, kind of fun to catch. Yep. Kind of fun to look at. Don't really need to catch them to eat them, but like this, this could be damn good catfish bait. Yes. I can see you putting a circle hook through that thing, letting it soak on the bottom for a while. It's oily, it's like bright, yep. it's hardy. Good for catfish bait, not good for human bait. No. Use that to hook into a fish that does taste good. Yeah. Pardon my plate, I'm gonna stick to eating these goldfish.